Welcome to the Nightly Rant. I'm Mike. And I'm Toria. This is the show where we talk about the awful things that have happened in our day, the awesome things that have happened in our day, and all the things in between. Thanks for listening, and we truly hope you enjoy. Do you miss the glory days of talk radio where the hosts knew their stuff and were not spreading fake stories? What would it be like if those same hosts could speak their mind and not have to answer to management for it? I have just the thing for you. Spencer Hughes Podcast and Adventures is the new show from Spencer Hughes, formerly of Fox News Radio and a host of other places. For as little as $1 a month, you can have access to Spencer again. His insights will make you think, and his humor will make you laugh. This is your chance to help a man build his dream and support his family. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Spencer Hughes today and subscribe to one of the several levels you can choose from. You will not be disappointed in the content you are going to begin receiving. Patreon.com forward slash Spencer Hughes. Adventurous content the way radio used to be. So we went to our first city council meeting in a really long time. I guess you could say we're back at it. Yeah, we're back at it. Well, it hasn't been that long. We went to the Buena Park City Council meeting a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I forgot about that. And we were going to go to the Buena Park City Council meeting. Tonight. Tonight. That's how I know it was a couple weeks ago. But we were running late, and I really just wanted to speak about the crime down the road here. Um, And we were running late. So there was no point because I wouldn't have made it in time for the public comments. So we skipped that. We tried a new taco place. It was meh. Meh. It won't be making our list of best tacos, put it that way. Holy cow, no. When we do that episode, which will be coming up, because we did pizza. We also did tacos. We we did did Mexican food. Mexican food. Now we should do tacos. Specifically tacos. But I'm going to tell you guys, you're going to be mad at me, but Taco Bell would make my top five for tacos. And Mitchell would agree with me. It's just, you know, be mad at me if you want, but it's I'm not how mad. we feel. <laughs> anyway. I could eat Taco Bell every single day. We wound up going to the La Palma City Council meeting because they're kids. considering introducing an ordinance that allows certain types of legal marijuana businesses in the northern industrial end of their city, okay? So, for instance, uh, marijuana cultivation, marijuana testing. um, Marijuana processing. Marijuana processing, so like turning it into an edible or a concentrate or a cream. And there was packaging as well. And then there was packaging... Um, and in distribution, the trucks being able to go. Yeah. Okay. Because it's got to leave the facility. And then they're potentially considering um, online sales and delivery. Right. Okay. But that was a. But that was maybe. that was a maybe. But they are potentially considering that. Okay. The only thing they're not considering is a dispensary. No dispensaries. Right. That means nobody has to come to your city to buy marijuana because there's nothing there to buy marijuana from. The marijuana will structurally grow in your city and then leave. And if there were sales, it would be in a truck driving to the customer. The customer doesn't drive to you. Right. Important to remember for later in this episode because this is going to be a batshit crazy episode because what we witnessed tonight was, well... Sheer fucking lunacy. Batshit crazy. Sheer fucking lunacy. So, okay, where where should we start? You tell me. We should start with the social media lead-up to tonight. Okay. It's important information for later. Yeah. So, they got all in an uproar hearing about this. And so, the real city council meeting where they discussed this was last Tuesday. Yeah. This okay. was, was this a special meeting or this something? This was a special meeting. So last Tuesday, that was okay. the real meeting. 
and they were advertising for the week up to last Tuesday the need for people to come out and this person was anti the whole idea and then I made a comment like well you know you do realize that marijuana is legal and that cities need to take control over the regulations and rules that are going to eventually come out of it if they want to stay ahead of the game they have to take control Okay. Ironically, that was the argument made in favor of passing this tonight. They can't just stick their head in the sand. Right. They have to take control. I think it's ironic that that's what I said on social media. Anyway, the lady basically just dismissed me and said, well, it's okay. If you're for that, then you're for that. But we're against it. And that's, that's that. And that's why. Well, like, way to go. Yeah. You just decimated my argument. But hey, we'll, we'll just ignore you. So we can continue. Well, of course. These people don't want to hear what you have to say if you're opposing them. They only want you to say things if you support them. Well, that's the other How big thing. I haven't learned this yet. But that's the other big thing that I've noticed tonight. And I'm going to put paint it kind of in the same picture as the SB54 situation. Because it's very similar. You had people who were absolutely in favor of this idea on one side. Yes. And you had people who were absolutely opposed to the idea on the other side. And then, of course, there were people in the middle. But who did you hear from? You heard from the people who were absolutely for it, and you heard from the people who were absolutely against it. Right. You got the extremes. And so those extremes were, like, loud and obnoxious. But the whole time... The city up there is trying to give an unbiased presentation. They're trying to actually address the issues. They take the time to go through these social media posts and respond in the meeting to those posts. Something that every person I've seen on Facebook complains about that... Well, I want to be able to tell the city council, but they never respond to me. They responded directly to your right? stupid social media posts. But you're going to say that they're not transparent? Really? Really? They did something that they don't even come close to having to do. They looked at your social media, first of all. And then it was obviously brought to the attention of the city council... Because right. it wouldn't have been on the agenda if it hadn't been brought to their attention. Oh, right. It was brought to their attention, and they chose the path of let's respond to their comments in our presentation. Every single one of them. Yeah. Because I've read all of the comments yeah. on social media. And yeah, media. that's what's funny. You see, like, hundreds of comments. It's really, like, five topics. And four of those topics were only said once, and most of it's all one topic. Yeah. Yeah, Exactly. And that's what you find. Usually the loudest screamers and yellers Don't know what the are on the losing about. side of the argument. Oh, my God. And that's why they're so loud. Because they're on the losing side of the argument. I just can't. What? Okay. Okay. I have, I have to say this. Go for it. The population tonight at the meeting was not exactly young. No. Okay. So these are the people... I'm, I'm generalizing, so my apologies if I offend you hmm. slightly. I'm generalizing. These are the people that are saying that young people can't be bothered to read, don't know what they're talking about, are ruining the world for everyone, and make uninformed decisions. Well, yeah, and that, okay, you know, but, 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 but that's where I was going with my comments, so I'll have to remember that. Go okay. ahead. But these people sat through two identical presentations tonight. They were identical. Each of which were an hour long, by the way. Identical. By the way, did you notice that that was his abbreviated presentation and it Sweet took an hour? Jesus. Can you imagine the detailed full presentation? That dude's monotonous voice <laughs> made me want to gouge my ears off. Anyway, that's beside the point. You were ready to smoke marijuana just so you didn't have to listen to him That's anymore. what I said to Samantha. <laughs> These people are so monotonous, it makes me want to get high listening to them. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Two identical presentations that outlined every single motherfucking point in this whatever it's called proposal. 
item. It was measure. a public hearing, and it's and it's a it's going to and be it's a, a and it's a it's part of the municipal code. So it'll be a new chapter code in the municipal change? code. Yeah, coded whatever it's called. It's a code addition. Two yeah. hours of yammering on the exact same things. Everything was said yeah. at least twice, and maybe additional yeah, times. To be clear, guys, manager, to be clear, repetitive. to be clear, what the what the consultant was trying to do is. Generalized. This is what cities should do. This is how cities should act. This is how cities blah blah blah. But we and all know. Said that but we all that. know that the city was paying for him to tell them what to do. Right. And so by him saying that he would do this and maybe do that and maybe do that if he was a city, that's basically saying you need to do this and do this and do this and do that. So they were educated. So they were following that path. These people. They were educated for two hours on this topic. And they still get up and say the most asinine things. Like, it's like they were taught the sky was blue. And they got up and bitched that it's purple. Well, that's what I was saying. That's where I was headed with the idea comment before. Because then that lady that was like the leader of the social media charge. Yes, that lady. Know, she goes on there. And they've already said multiple times there will be no locations in La Palma that will f- have physical storefronts to sell marijuana. None. The only way they can sell it is fr- storefrontless internet sites and then deliver it. And they're not even sure they want to do that. That's like, sounds to me like if they could strike two lines out of there, that's what they would strike out of there right now. But okay, they say all this. And what's her first comment? We don't want all of the surrounding cities to send people in here buying marijuana. They just told you there won't be any way to buy marijuana in the city. And you're going to, that's the first thing you're going to say. How much are you paying attention to what's being said? I'll tell you how much. Zero. You talked about how rude they were. They didn't pay attention. And that's where I was going with the extreme thing. Neither side pays attention. They come in there with their mind made up and they don't listen to anything that's said. Nothing. Their mind is made up. Therefore, that's how it is. Nothing you say. They could say, look, this check says $50 million. And you could look at it and go, no, actually it says $50. It's even written over here, $50. No, it's $50 million. And they'll point at it vehemently because... They've decided that it's fifty million, and even though you show them that in black and white it says fifty, you're wrong. Did you know? Also, what this lunatic brought up that the entire five hundred thousand plus dollars in revenues is going to bring into the city of La Palma is going to go straight into the pocket of the La Palma city manager. Yeah, that was someone's comment too. That they know that once the revenue comes in, that it'll immediately be distributed. In the form of raises to the staff. Now, I know she couldn't have been talking about the city council and their $200 a year stipend. $200 a month? A month. $200 a month stipend. They might raise it to 205 Come on now. Yeah. That's quite a hefty pay increase. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. $5. Woo! Now, do most people work at their day job and expect and to get percent. a raise each year? Most, of course, most and better than two and a half percent too. I would, I would think so. So, if you expect that at your job, why should the city manager not expect that at her job? Just curious. My guess is, the raise she gets in twenty nineteen, if she gets one, will be the same, regardless of this marijuana rezone. Well, but here's the thing: you asked a question. Let me answer it for you, because I can answer on the part of the public if you'd like. Why does it matter? Because it, because it's their tax dollars. They're paying their money to give that raise. Don't bother that when they're asking for a raise at their work, there's somebody that owns that company that they're taking that money out of their profit to give to you. So it's no different than you taking a little more of your tax dollars to go to help pay someone's pay increase that you want so they should be allowed to want. Why are the idiots always the entitled ones? But, okay, how prophetic was it that he brought that one guy up there with the tattoos? Like, he let the, he let, who, the first person that spoke was the, he was the Hispanic older guy, right? Yeah. 
Okay. And he was definitely against it. I didn't hear much of what he said because he was also fairly monotonous and he talked really But he was slowly. definitely against it. Okay. I can't remember his exact reasons why he was against it. But then... I'm sure it was the Mexican Mafia. To me... No, I don't think he said that. He, In fact, I know he didn't say it. But to me, what was fairly prophetic was the second guy who was covered in tattoos who goes up there and I'm telling you... And I'm telling you... Oh, he did. I'm telling you, when he started talking... I swear to you, I thought he was against it, too. Well, yeah, because he started out by talking about the very unfortunate situation that happened in Long Beach. and Exactly. And then he how came he came off as extremely pro-law enforcement, extremely pro, like, that kind of people. That's why I think he was prophetic and amazing. Because he really, he didn't come off that way. He, he was, was that, that way. way. And, like, he was so honest that he talked about how, and he did it in such a cool way, he talked about how, you know, how drugs almost, they ended his 30-year career because uh-huh. of injuries he got. Using drugs that were legal to use during work and after work, opiate painkillers. That's what he was addicted to. I cannot believe, okay, I have to make a sidebar for a second here. I cannot believe that doctors prescribe fentanyl still. Right? I thought the same thing. I was like, isn't that that drug that's killing people? The but drug it is, isn't that it? is killing people it is. Okay. in Canada and other parts of this country. And doctors are prescribing this to people. It's insane. But marijuana? No! Well, exactly. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Dude was right. Dude said that there are people who are, he called them, the community bullies. Yes. Who it's their way or the highway. And I've got to admit, me personally, I haven't really been connected on boards to too many of those people. Maybe, as I sit here and think about it, maybe one time. Just once. Other than that, the people I've dealt with have been very, very, very reasonable. Okay? So it's amazing to me that they... In a town their size, which isn't that big, okay, they had multiple bullies. Right. They're going around and it's, you know, their way or the highway. And I sat there and I thought about it and I was like, well, but are they bullies? And by my definition, they are bullies because they don't just go online and post their opinion. They actually show up at meetings and demand that the city council does things their way. Like the dude was yelling about, we, no, we want to talk now. I mean, the damn mayor had to look at him and that's the only time he looked like a mayor, if you ask me. And then he looked <laughs> over and said, yeah, the mayor was interesting, dude. He he's wearing over like an he's unbuttoned like, polo shirt and he's the polo mayor. Shirt and almost shorts, man. Like it was weird. He had long pants on, but it, they looked kind of short, like, you know. Golf pants. They're little higher. So they don't get stuck in the shoe. But hey. Is that a thing? Yeah. Anyway. Oh, anyway. Dude looks at him and goes, well, that's you don't run the meeting. I do. And it's like, yeah. You know what? I know the role and what, rule, what order we're supposed to do this in. I've been trained in that. I had to go to a damn class when I got elected. Right. So you don't know. So be quiet. Stop trying to tell me what to do. But, but did bro who wanted to speak actually put a speaker card in no no in fact he clearly didn't know how meetings work in fact we forgot to mention that at this meeting there's an interior room that isn't that big but clearly that city doesn't need it that big because hey they're about the same size as los alamitos and their city council chambers are about the same size as los alamitos right tiny there's then they added a second room which was like the lobby to city hall yeah, and they put chairs out and there. And they put chairs out there. And then more chairs outside of that. So, on so the, there was a lot of people there. On the way into the main city council chamber where all of like the static seating is, they had a little table off to the side with a small stack of agendas, a small stack of this funky leaflet they were handing out, and a colossal stack of speaker cards. I mean, if there was a hundred copies of the leaflet, there was a thousand copies of the speaker card. Like ten times as many. Yeah. It was a crap load. The stack was massive. Yet what? 12 people bothered to put one in? Yeah, which it amazed me that that there's that many people there and only 12 people were speaking. Also, 
I thought you had to put in a speaker card to be able to speak in a meeting. At Is that their kind of a gray area? At their discretion, if there's, like, okay, tonight they had, what, 12 people speak, so they had 60 minutes, right? Well, yeah. if they had scheduled 90 minutes in their agenda for public speaking time, at his discretion, he could cut it off there or allow... Because there's no more cards. Or allow 30 more minutes because there's no more cards. But if there was 400 minutes of speaker cards, they have to let all 400 let minutes go. speak? Yep. I see. So essentially... So turning think, in a card guarantees that you get to speak. Essentially, the end of the speaker cards could have been the end of the meeting. But he was decided to be respectful of the opinions of the citizens and allow them all who, to speak if they wanted to. Who, by the way, had spent the better part of two hours calling him and the rest of his colleagues not transparent, yeah, um, clueless, bumbling. I mean, these are the things that were said about them. Also, I have one mildly insulting comment about that room full of people. They're the loudest whisperers I've heard in my entire life. <laughs> if you are whispering to the person next to you, I should not be able to hear clearly the exact words you're saying. And the, the tone or the volume at which I'm talking right Wait. now Wait. is the level that they were whispering. Wait. 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 So you mean I'm not whispering right now? No. What do you mean I'm not whispering right Am now? I Am whispering I whispering now? now? <laughs> How about now? Oh, there we go. There you go. Now I'm whispering. What the hell is that about? I don't You're right. Know. It was asking. I heard that too. It's like, shut your pie hole. If you don't know how to whisper, don't fucking try to whisper. The guy next to me and the wife in front of him. The one that looked like the lady from Grey's Anatomy? Yes. They are in favor of this because of the money. That's fair. And you want to know how I know that? Because of Because I heard reaction. them whispering to each other. Oh my God. Okay. There was a dude... That was like second row from the back in the inner room. And uh -huh. he was sitting on the end. And he's the dude who told the other dude he was blocking his view. He had like a 10 minute quote unquote whisper conversation with his neighbor about how the city council is pocketing all of this money. And how they're all idiots. And he can't believe the left wing idiots of La Palma elected those people to the city council. Now, I'm pretty sure by the results of the vote on the legalization of marijuana in 2016 that La Palma is anything but left wing. Right. They're extremely conservative. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Mike. And I truly hope you extremely enjoyed the show. So, You're able to subscribe to the show know. on iTunes. Because for one thing, Google I think, Play, if I'm right, their Stitcher, demographic is a little so older. So as to never miss an episode. If the city council if meeting tonight chance, is any, an episode, any indication of what their there, demographic is, that's you accurate. Can catch up well, seems like a retirement shows, community type of place. And it just depends to me. Like, to Yogi's okay, Podcast Network, the mayor seemed all too familiar com, with most of those people that were speaking. Which tells me that they're regulars. Because they play bridge together. But it tells me they're regulars at these meetings. Right, like these people are regulars. Well, and a lot of them sounded like they were his neighbors. Like it doesn't seem to me like there's a lot of residential area. In that the was the part that pissed me off too. Why does everybody, if you talk about homelessness, if you talk about addiction, if you talk about marijuana, why does everybody make the comment that the elected officials don't care about this because it's not going to be near their homes? Right. Yet multiples of those people who spoke were like, "Oh, you're my neighbor. Oh, you're my neighbor." Uh, sounds to me like it would affect your homes, and that's what you're so upset about. And they live in your neighborhood; it's gonna affect their homes too. And even if it didn't, who cares? Their job is to represent everybody. Oh, and that brings me to the people who are bitching that why can't we vote on it? Well, you know what? If you want to vote on everything, then why did you elect a city council to represent you? Yeah, you know, why not just have big, massive city meetings where all of the voter ability able people well, but show you know up why but you know why yes, but you know why they don't do that because because cost, five people would still make because, the decision and it would cost more to have those five people do that because of the security measures that you have to t take than it would be to have a city council and pay them their measly 200 dollars a month yep okay that's the point so you get people who are civic minded who want to make a difference and they get in there yeah you know what there's some power involved there wasn't there a TV show or a movie where everybody was carrying around like a little transponder with them and they had to vote on literally everything? Yes, I was thinking of that when we were talking like, about it earlier. crimes and yeah. stuff, like whether people were guilty or innocent and they voted on it? Yeah. I can't but, remember what it's called, but that's interesting. We'll have to Google that later. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It is a little bit of power 
if it's handled incorrectly. That's the thing. You know, you're being elected to a spot where you have a 20% vote for the entire community on an issue. Right. 20% is a lot. You know, if your revenue in your business increases 20% from this week to last week. Yeah. You're going to be pretty freaking happy. Right. So 20% is a pretty big chunk. And that's what you get is a vote. But if you take that vote and you use it for the best interests of the people you represent. And you try to represent the majority's feelings. Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong. So but sometimes, but sometimes the majority is on the wrong side of the issue. And you want to know what? I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to tell you something else. Sometimes the majority is on the wrong side of the issue. But I'm actually going to say that you can be right and they could pick a different path and their path is also right. Because there's, it's not always black and white. Sometimes there's three possible answers and two of them are good. Or one of them might be better than the other, but the other one has its own strategies behind it. It's still a good answer. They might choose that answer. Just because you don't agree with that doesn't mean they're screwing up. Because that's what it comes out like. You're not doing it my way, so you're wrong. You are getting way too philosophical on this topic. Because it pisses me off how people act. This is how people act online all the time. I have to tell you something, though, which is hilarious. Okay, so this person, and I'm not going to name any names because, you know, Mm. I'm well-behaved and I've been taught well, comments about how they were really, really upset that three out of the five city council members voted against what the people wanted tonight. Correct. Okay. I remember we are already told me this. Uh, yes, but it, it gets better. Uh, I understand. So then I, I responded saying that they haven't done anything, that they're asking opinions. And I said, don't lie to people. It's ridiculous. Okay. Did I call this person a liar? No. Did I imply that they'd lied? Yeah. Yeah. I implied it. I didn't say that she'd lied. I said, don't lie to people. This is a general statement. Leaving it open for she could have been misinformed yeah, and not lying. Guilty conscience coming up. Whatever. Just guilty take it how conscience you wish. coming up. And then she comes back and says, I was misinformed that the meeting had ended. Thanks for calling me a liar instead of explaining that I'd been misinformed. Well, first of all, you didn't start your message with, someone told me that three council members right. voted in their own interest. You started it with, tonight... Three council members voted in their own interest. So how is anyone supposed to tell you you're misinformed? Precisely. When you didn't, you stated it as you were there and you know for a fact it happened. And we know it didn't happen because there was no vote scheduled tonight or even two weeks from tonight. Also, I feel like if I had have called her heinously misinformed, like I kind of wanted to, the butthurt meter would have shot straight off the fucking scale. There's um, that word everybody loves, butthurt. Well, you know. And then, so I responded in my sassy, sassy, sassiest way. I didn't call you a liar. I asked you not to lie to people. The difference in those two things is pretty large. Thanks for overreacting. Yeah. So, this person... Did they re- overreact even more? Decided that they no longer wanted to have this conversation in public and decided to stick it to private message. O-M-G. <laughs> <clears throat> what? Same rules apply. I know. I I didn't appreciate this at all. She says, if I tell a lie, I am a liar. If I am a liar, I have told a lie. I don't agree. I feel like a liar is somebody who lies continuously. Exactly. And if you've lied once, you're not a liar. And I would literally say to her, I would literally say to her, I couldn't possibly call you a liar because by my definition, a liar is someone who lies continuously. I don't know you well enough to know whether you lie continuously or not, so I couldn't possibly have called you a liar in my philosophy. We share a brain sometimes. I said, unfortunately, I'm not willing to use your definition of those words. But that's okay. You go ahead and think I called you a liar. To be honest, I couldn't care less. Take care. And then she sends me another private message in another thread asking me how long I've lived in La Palma and if I pay property taxes. She's none one of, of those ma- people. None of that matters. Yeah. Like, 
eat a dick. So it's so you should be allowed. So you should be allowed to lie because you pay property taxes. Yeah. That's what that comes off like. But me wanting the truth is not allowed. If I don't live in La Palma, haven't lived there for 987,000 years, and if I don't pay property taxes. Well, eat a dick is my response to that. Though I did not say that to her. I was much nicer. Eat a dick. Well, but quite honestly, <laughs> where you live has nothing to do with where you're interested in, in in events. Like, for instance, okay, if you live in Buena Park or Cerritos or Cyprus and you don't want marijuana cultivation facilities in your area, in then your you... city, then you're going to go oppose this one because your thought process is as soon as they put one in that touch it in a city that touches your city, that they're going to bleed over into your city because... Like, okay, remember when Cyprus was considering the tattoo shop? And yes. what did the staff talk to them about? They called neighboring Artesia, cities. which was a, na- is a close neighboring city. It's like two cities over. Mm-hmm. It, it touches Cerritos, which touches, yes. you know, Cyprus in yes. places. Um, or actually La Palma, which touches Cyprus. Well, because his anyway, little tattoo shop was in Artesia. Right, and so and they, they checked on it to see what kind of citizen his shop was, right? How good of a citizen were they? Yeah. And they got glowing reviews. So it was four to one, and they voted and allowed him the, the use permit. Well, that's kind of like the situation here. If you're oppo- if you live in Buena Park and you're opposed to this, you're going to want to oppose it. And by the same token, if you're for it, you're going to want it to go in there because then it will hopefully bleed over into your city. And you can sh- say to your city council, look at how much money La Palma's making. Look at how well it's going over right. there. They have not had an increase in crime. They have not had, because they're the trailblazer for you, to prove that the naysayers were wrong. When you live somewhere where the cities are all on top of one another, you should be on top of the issues that are happening in your neighboring city. Exactly. Whether or not you're loudly voicing an opinion on those issues is... I can see both sides of it. I can see both sides. Anyway. But I, ju- I, I could also see both sides, but I just gave you the reason and the strategic uh-huh. plan behind right. getting involved in that. Because right. you're basically saying to yourself, look, my in my city... There is huge opposition to this. It's like right now, if there was a vote, it would be one yes and four no's, let's say. And you know this. So how are you going to persuade those four to yet no's to yeses? Well, you know in La Palma that it's already three in favor and two opposed. Mm-hmm. So you work to get one of the two that are opposed in favor just in case one of the in favors drops out. So you're still guaranteed a three to two win. That's your, your initial strategy. Then... You help them succeed. You get involved and you help them succeed. And you help them do better and better and better. Then, now they're succeeding, right? And it's working. Now you go to your city and you say, look, Mr. No, look at what's going on over there. Look at how much money they're making. You know how you guys are talking about there's not enough police in the street and crime is going up and you need more policemen? There you go. How many policemen can you get for $2 million a year? Direct to the bottom line. Hey, Probably a couple. So anyway. So and my point being, you, you're, by saying that you threw me off where I was Sorry. Headed. So you're showing them the benefits that they're getting in the other city. And they're like, oh, okay, you know what? I was worried that the crime was going to go up. But there's the proof that it hasn't. And I mean, it's not apples to oranges. It's apples to apples because, hey, you know, our cities touch each other. So we're sharing the same group of people and you it bleeds out and that's the objective that's why you support it you're right like where you come from the cities and towns are so spread apart that one really shouldn't have a say in what the other one does but i'm sure even then there are probably commerce issues and things like that that other cities want to get involved in that's why the whole argument about do you pay um do you pay property taxes that's a bigoted comment because oh yeah, she's a bitch. Because, I don't give a shit who hears it. Because if you you either pay rent or you pay a mortgage, and their attitude is if you pay rent, you're you know lower oh, yeah. than them. They're better than you. Sorry, my you low know better. income rent paying clearly doesn't matter to her. And I I honestly fact, my response to that is also eat a dick. Want to know one argument I've heard against home ownership and in favor of renting? There's lots of them. One I've heard is when you own a home and the toilet needs a new seat, you pay for it. 
When you rent, the landlord pays for it. Uh -huh. When you own a place, you're paying a mortgage that's higher than the rent. Because you're going to get a tax break back, and so it makes it essentially equal to the rent. So the, the argument is you own that property. But my argument is, yeah, but you also own all the liabilities that go along with that property. If, if someone falls down the stairs in your apartment building, you get sued. Exactly. But if someone falls down the stairs in the apartment building you rent from, ha, you got no liability at all. So meanwhile, you keep paying the same rent you would have paid in mortgage. Exactly. And you don't technically own anything. But hey, when you're all done, let me ask you a question. How many people do you actually know who have the deed to their home because they've paid it off and it's theirs 100% so that when they sell it, they do not have to give up any portion of the proceeds None. to a bank? I know nobody. My parents. Maybe them. Yeah, that'd probably be it. They bought their house outright in the 70s. There you go. So that would be it. That's it. One couple. That's it. One. That's it. One. And I would have to say, because I know them, I only know one. I would have said zero. But when you say that, one. I don't know anybody who's... Yeah, I, I think even my aunt and uncle refinanced theirs. Like, that's the thing. <laughs> They're, everybody has a mortgage. So everybody's paying rent. So right. guess what? When I'm tired of this place, I can go rent somewhere else. Exactly. And guess what? I get back the majority of my deposit. In fact, I've been here long enough that I probably get back all my deposit. Exactly. Okay. Now, when you sell your place, you got to pay off your, your mortgage 100% before you yeah, can move on. If the market on. crashes, you get fucked. So if you get, yeah, like if in the time that you're waiting, the market goes way down and you lose, you know, you, you it's it's was worth 500000 and now it's worth 300000 and your and your loan is 700000 well, guess what? You're screwed because even if you sell for three hundred thousand, you you pay it off, you still owe money. Now what do you do? Like there's there's issues, but I understand there's tax breaks, etc. So please Wait, don't please don't send hate mail to info at yogispodcastnetwork.com or do. telling me how uh, crazy I am, or you know don't go to yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash feedback and. Tell me how nuts I am for thinking this because I think you should. There's, there's Everyone's arguments. Telling he's nuts. There's arguments on both sides. I see the home ownership argument. I see the renters argument. My point in bringing this up had nothing to do with proving who was right and who was wrong, and everything to do with guess what? Both opinions are valid. Can I get back to my? A renter can have an opinion, and a homeowner can have an opinion on an issue. It doesn't make you better because you're a homeowner. Can I get back to my point from like five no. minutes ago before you cut me off and went on no. your tirade? No, you can't. Good, because now I can't remember what it was. That's good. I figured as much. That's why I said no. You're an asshole. Because really, I, I don't care if you do or you don't, but I figured you wouldn't know it, so therefore I said no, and I was right. Look at that. Oh. Oh, you remember The only that. other point I wanted to make... No, this is something different. The only other point I wanted to make about my interaction with this lady, person, mm -hmm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. is uh, her second message where she asked me how much property taxes I pay... She said, sorry for bothering you again. And I started with, you're not sorry. Like, don't lie. Now, she's a liar. Because she's not sorry. Not sorry at all. But that's still not consistently not telling the truth. Now she's been in, now she's, she's consistently not there, told though. the truth twice. Strike three and you're out. That's why baseball has three strikes, damn it. I keep telling you this. Currently all of my I was a baseball player, therefore we must... Use three strikes or else it doesn't work for me. Currently, all two of my interactions with her have been filled with lies. That's very disappointing to me. I don't appreciate it. Yeah. I'm I thought likely about that not, earlier. I'm likely not going to respond again because, you know. You don't really strikes. want to be totally disappointed. You just want to leave her dangling and I don't blame you. Yeah. But, See, I've learned when to quit. <laughs> but it's just. To a point. But it just comes back to this whole situation. Like someone said in our group that. People are afraid of things they don't understand, and it's totally true. But then here's the thing. If yeah. something you don't understand and you know that you're automatically afraid of those things, why don't you educate yourself on the topic? I mean, is this any different than the discussion we had about Measure A in Cyprus or legalizing marijuana, Proposition 64 on 2016 in Literally California? No. It's not any different. It's all the same. I don't care if you're voting on a citywide idea 
if you're coming to a city council meeting to argue your idea, if you're voting in a countywide, a statewide, or nationwide agenda, do your research and know who you're voting for or what you're voting for. I have for. figured out who's truly ruining the world. People who... I mean, it's not the millennials? No, Come it's on. not. Come on. Everybody says it's the millennials. Now, I'll give you Even this. Even the millennials Shut say it's the millennials. Up. I'll give you this. A portion of the people ruining the world are millennials. Okay, I, I can buy that. Okay. Because that would mean that I thought they were everybody, but maybe there's more. And I can be open to the fact that there might be more. The people who are ruining the world are the people who don't bother to do any research before they vote on something. And then yes. the other people who are ruining the world are the people who don't bother to vote on anything because they just can't be bothered to be informed or do anything with their life. They're in the same boat. So... But here's a question for you. Who's worse? The people who vote when they're not informed. Mm, but I are think they? they're worse. Are they worse than people who are informed but choose not to vote? Yes, because the people who are uninformed but still vote are giving their vote to the person who misinformed them. And they're letting that person mm. have multiple it's voices. It's an interesting argument. I can see both sides of that one, too. Yeah. Because... You to could, be, it could be argued that the person who's informed is so well informed that they're going to know that if they don't vote, that their vote's going to matter so much that the other side's going to win. And yet, because of being a big baby or for whatever reason, they choose not to vote. To be completely honest with you, now that I give it like one more minute of thought, I don't think either is worse than the other. I think no, they're, they're both all equally bad. awful. Well, that's the point. And We're, contributing but to the But that's the point the I was kind of making. Is everybody does the whole, oh, well, the city council only has two choices. They can either approve this ordinance or they can deny the ordinance. No, they could narrow the ordinance. Isn't that what the mayor was trying to say? Yes. Like, which of these things, are we forced to have all of these things? Well, no, you can pick just one. And now, the, the, the difference is... Now, let's be honest. You can't have cultivation if you don't have distribution. You have to have both of those. Those go together the same way sales and um, deliveries go together. The difference is that it's easy to point out the people who just didn't bother to vote. You actually have to have a conversation yes. to figure out the people who pulled something out of their ass to vote on. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Completely agreed. So if you really want to vote on something, perhaps you should consider giving it a read. Maybe at I'm least sure even read it. the fucking synopsis. Yeah, make sure you understand it. At least there. get a brief summary. Well, and that's the same with, it's a little more difficult with candidates because, you know, you can't listen to what other people say about a candidate. You just can't. You can, I suppose you could make what people say about a candidate inspire you to research them more. Yeah. But I don't think you should let it inform your decision. Mm -mm. Because people come into things like that and discussions like that with their own biases. And you might not agree with where they're coming from on those biases. So you owe it to yourself and to your community to do the research and not spread lies about people. Yeah. But this is this overall is the mentality that we see today. And like, you know, like Abe said on, you know, last night's show. People want to yell at the food that the chef screwed up. If everybody took all the information they heard about, I don't know, a candidate, an issue, whatever, pick your thing. If everybody took all of the information that the media was barfing, if they took all of the information that they saw being spewed around online, if they took all of the information that if it's a candidate, a candidate provides, or if it's a, a thing, all the things that the ballot measure initiative, whatever, has in it, they could likely make an informed decision. And they're not going to agree with the person sitting next to them. They're not going to agree with the person who lives three doors down from them completely. But at least they're making their informed decision. And if people don't make informed decisions, the democracy's a lie. Exactly. But here's the thing, though. It, it is kind of akin to what um, Abe was trying to say. You know, people... People set out on this path and they get all self-righteous about... You know, oh my God, you know, can you believe that Trump, you know, he did this and Trump did that and Trump did this other thing and blah, 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 blah. Well, let's be real, okay? He may have gotten elected on the premise that, you know, he's going to kick ass and all this stuff. But the reality is, like all of them before him, 
They get into office and there's only so much power the president has over his own government. He's essentially the representative of the United States, a figurehead, so to speak. Because the president's only real job in the democracy is to sign or veto laws. And he is like the executive branch's CEO. He heads up all the different departments, like the FBI is part of the Justice Department. He's the head. He's their boss. Exactly. Okay? So he's like the CEO. But the reality is... He doesn't make laws. He influences the creation of the laws. So he's at the same mercy that Obama was at, that Bush was at, that Clinton was at. They're at the mercy of Congress and the Senate. So when people are bitching and moaning about how this country is so effed up, maybe they should think about the fact that these people don't have term limits. So they've been in there for 30 years setting policy. If you don't like where the country is, those people got to go. And if you've been sitting in an office in Washington for 30 years, how informed do you really think you are with what the people actually and the want? Thing, and the thing about that is, to be honest with you, I think if you handled your job the right way, which is getting out and about to the cities you represent, or in this case, the... State. State that you represent or the area of a state that you represent. You got to get back there, okay? So, especially on weekends, you need to come back and you need to attend events that happen on weekends and get to know what's going on with your constituents. Because then you can go back to Washington and actually represent what they want. If the state is represented by two senators... Yes. Then do those two senators... um, need to interact with all 39 million people kind of thing like they're representative of all yes. 39 million people yeah so you essentially have two senators that represent you in the u.s yes interesting and then our representatives are you know one district. per so many that's like people the 48th district the right whatever it's one it's per so ever many people so it's like huh. probably 200 to 300,000 people it's interesting the point is that people, you know, they make these wild accusations and they point fingers. But really, how about we look at the children being separated from their parents? That's been a United States policy for 21 years. So instead of going Trump did this and Trump did that, how about we simply say... We need to fix this. We this need to fix this because it's looking bad. We look like uh, child abusers. How about we, how about everybody, so let's fix that and change this policy. How about everybody steps up and realizes that they didn't know this has been going on for the last 20 years? Right. And that instead of getting all mad and embarrassed that they didn't know that, just steps up and was like, well, we didn't know about this. This is unacceptable. Fix this. Exactly. Instead of pointing fingers, and then people will then argue back to you, well, no, Trump didn't have to enforce it. Well, no, but neither did Obama, and neither did Bush, and neither did Clinton. None of them had to enforce and these rules, but the they point. did. Like, who cares? Well, right, but they did. That's my point. None of them had to, but they did. But that's beside the point. If you change the rule, then there's nothing for them to enforce. Right. So how about how about anybody who's listening to this, if you're non-supportive of the separation at the border, how about you step up and stop pointing any fingers and organize some people who are going to get mad and get this policy changed? Right. It's time. You ta- you've you got to take action, people. Because, you know, it's just like this. Like, can't. You know what? This episode's going to be called La Palma Wants to Get on the Canny Bus. That's going to be the name of the episode. And you need to get on the bus. When there's an issue... Maybe not the candy bus. Whenever there's an issue, the whatever that issue is, there's a bus for that issue. Get on it. It's going to drive through empty if you don't get on it. Right. Have your voice be heard. And you know what? That's the thing. I don't care if you're just one person who feels a certain way. Just one. If you're the only person and you quite literally don't know anyone else who thinks like you do. Nobody else. Your wife, your boyfriend, girlfriend... Husband, father, mother, sister, uncle, aunt, grandparents, whatever. 
18 then year olds. None of them out. agree with you. None of them have the same opinion as you. You're the only one of your circle that has that opinion. Guess Someone what? Someone else out of the three hundred. Someone else out people? of all the people in the yeah. world, or in this, especially in this country, Shares have the similar you. opinion to you. It might not be exactly the same, but it's similar enough that you two are going to get along if you meet. And if you can reach them, maybe you find your people and they'll connect and you with more people. that's the point. Never give up. You know what? Like, I'm going to just say this. In my situation, I had a lot of people locally who were like, oh, oh, oh and it's still going on, okay? Still mm-hmm. going on, the whining, bitching, and moaning. But you know what? 15,200 plus voted for me. That's awesome. And that is way more than I would have ever expected. And that is a place to start. And that's why I'm not letting go of the agenda and why I'm staying involved in these issues. And I really appreciate, and I have to say this publicly, that you support me in that and you help me by noticing things that might be of interest to us. Because you noticed this and pointed it out to me, and then we decided to go do it. 15,000 people voted for you and expected you to be the voice for them. Why does why do you have to not be the voice for him then? Because you didn't get elected. Yeah. That's a good point. You ran for office to be the voice for these people. Well, and you know, not to speak for him, but the other gentleman in the race, since there was only two of us. Yeah. I'm um, sure people could figure out who he has is. a similar attitude. I know. And seems like an A plus two. And that's exactly correct. You know what? I said this to you about the school board election. You make connections, and those connections give you a voice. And if you're able to use that voice for good and to accomplish things that need to be accomplished, then you don't need to be an elected official. You can just have an agenda and help get that agenda pushed. Exactly. And yeah, I I admit it. You have to have an agenda. but uh, But that's not some sinister thing. You know, when you have an agenda for a meeting, it's a plan for how the meeting is going to go. And you put topics in a certain order because you either know what's going to be more controversial, what's going to be less controversial, what's going to require more talking time, what's going to require less talking time. You tend, in my meetings, I tend to like the things that require the most talking time up front where you can give the most energy because the stuff that requires the least conversation, like quick yes, no, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, no, we won't do that. No, that's too much money. Yes, I approve of that. Oh, Those like things little, at the end. I like to get the little shit out of the way first. So and I like to, to take them at the last part because there's, they require no energy to answer. I but see. the other thing requires energy, so I like to have that up front. But are you hot? Put your tongue away. Dingus. <laughs> And he threw me off for the third time during this podcast. Good, you've done it to me podcast like seventy-three times. Podcast would have been over times. seventy-five minutes ago had you not derailed me three different times. So, for the people who can't see it, I am rolling my you're eyes as, as bad hard as, as the possible. uninformed voters. Suck. And by the way, people, the we're not in any way saying that everybody is an uninformed voter. No. We're not even saying that most people are uninformed voters. But let's face it. We're saying The group people... of uninformed voters mm-hmm. is large enough that it affects outcomes of elections. And that's who the parties are aiming their rhetoric at. They... Political campaigns advertise to people so that they get their name in front of them so that when those people are blindly checking boxes on election day, they'll remember that name. Let's be real. Well, for sure. And you know what? If you have enough money in a political campaign situation, and I would say county level, state level, or above, and you have enough money behind you, you can conduct a study to see how you're going to do with members of your own party. Mm-hmm. Then that same study will tell you what the voter turnout is going to be for your party. All predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. So from that, you know how many of them are going to come out, and you know what percentage of them you're likely to gather. You know how many votes you're going to get from your party. Right. And then those same statistics tell you how many of the Democrats you're going to get on your side, how many of the Republicans you're going to get on your side. So then you have this pool. Well, let's say you have 29,000 votes, and you know you're going to need 32,000 to win. How are you going to get 3,000 more votes? Well, 
You aim for the, the voters that voters. don't have any information. You aim for them and you pull some trick to convince them to vote for you because they vote for you because of a slogan. They vote for you because of some outrageous thing you said. I personally think that's how Trump got elected. Yeah. I think he played towards the... And by no means do I mean, again, that, uh, that everybody who voted for Trump is uninformed. Because I think it was very, very close in the informed voters. Like 50-50. It was the uninformed voters who tipped the ship. Yep. And they kind of fell prey to his, like, you know, let's face it. She was a terrible candidate. And that's what did it. It wasn't anything. It wasn't that people were voting for him. They were voting against her. Right. I know libertarians who were going to vote for Gary Johnson, who ended up voting for Trump, because they didn't want her to win. So they were voting against her. Don't even get me started on that. I don't want to talk about it. It's outrageous to me when people do that shit. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I feel like we've rambled for a really long time. We? And the original topic was... (laughs) About, you know, the marijuana (laughs) cultivation. But here's the final, you know, bottom line on that. It was clearly labeled as a public hearing only. The agenda did not have anything on it that said anything about a vote being taken, did it? Not a word. Nope. So that means no vote was going to be taken. Yet people like your friend that you're talking to there seem to have thought that a vote was taken. I'm casually ignoring that. And I'm like kind of tired of... The attitude that it's my way or the highway. I saw that with Measure A. I see it with the public attacks that are, I don't care how you put it, false attacks. Sorry, they are. Yeah. I think it's pretty scary that people think that they should just be able to yell the loudest... And they'll get their way. That's what I yelled in fake Mike Pence's face. Just because you're louder doesn't mean you're right. And I screamed it in his face, too. Well, and that's the thing. But that's the thing. They think that if they're louder, that's why why they have... I mean, I was impressed when I was reading the Buena Park's... um, Basically, their code of conduct for their city council. They're not allowed to stack the room. Uh So if they have... An issue where it's two to two and one person's undecided and they're trying to convince them. They're not allowed to go out and find supporters and invite them to the meeting. They are supposed to invite all sides to the meeting. And I was impressed with that. That's ethical. Because what the bullies do is they make damn sure that they have more people there. Why? Because they think that if they're louder, they're correct. Lots of people seem to. And as we saw with the Cypress Measure A thing, which, by the way, won by over 3,000 votes. Wasn't even close. Anyway, as we saw with that, only the one person kept asking, what's your substantive argument against the measure? Haven't seen anything from your side, but the other side has presented a substantive argument in favor of the measure. So I'm waiting for you, in all fairness... To provide a substantive argument against the measure. And if you can't or won't, I'm going to have to go with these people and not you. To me, that is the most unbiased, neutral uh, approach to any problem solving like tonight. Those people shouldn't have been there with a preconceived notion. They should have been, look, here's my problem. I think it's going to increase crime. Show me that it's not. Yep. There you go. I gave you my issue. And this is what I was talking about at the very beginning. What did the city try to do? Give them all the facts before they... But how? They, you said it as well. They listened to what was said on social media. No matter how asinine or obscure, weird, out there it was. And they responded to it. Yep, they sure did. They responded to it and gave an answer to the question. No matter how asinine the question was. A question could have been... Is it true that this ordinance will legalize Santa Claus to live with a group of aliens? Green aliens. 
Now that's asinine. People know there's no Santa Claus and there's no green aliens. But yet people are going to ask those kind of questions because they're insane. People are nuts. Mm -hmm. And when they're in a crowd of other people who are like-minded, they're even nuttier. And that, and that dude was very prophetic. Saying that the bullies are going to be here. He basically, without saying it, was saying the bullies are out there and they're going to scream and yell the loudest and they're going to try to tell you that that's the right thing. And they are. It's pretty sad. Pretty sad. Mm-hmm. So, Yogi, do you approve of, of our episode tonight? No, he doesn't. He approves. He says it's allowed him to get comfortable and get his belly scratches in. And he's a very happy little Karen Carrier. Who just happens to own a multi-million dollar podcast network. Him. This guy. Mm-hmm. Millionaire. Millionaire doggist. Anyway... Any comments, concerns, questions, info at yogispodcastnetwork.com. Good night, everyone. Hasta la bye-bye.